In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys another one of those sort of antique Wicked Lasers units. This is going to be the Wicked Lasers Sonar, the 405 nanometer purple laser pointer made by Wicked Lasers, I believe back in 2007. So this isn't going to be a review, obviously, because this laser is so old. It's very, very far from new condition. I didn't get it in new condition. I got it off of somebody on eBay, second hand, maybe third, fourth, fifth hand. I don't know how many owners it's had, but it does still work. Um, this is the laser right here. It has a chrome body, which is kind of neat. Most of the lasers I have um, have that either black body or not this shiny chrome, maybe more of a dull chrome. So I do like the host on this one a lot. And on Wicked Lasers website, they actually still have the product listing page up, even though this laser has been discontinued for a very long time. Um, and using the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive, I'm able to see that this product was on their website as early as October of 2007. So this laser is over a decade old, and also they were originally asking $2,000 for this laser. Um, their claim was that it was one of the first Blu-ray or type of purple laser pointers to the market. I definitely wasn't in the laser hobby back in 2007, so I personally can't confirm this, but rest assured I did not pay anywhere near that $2,000 that they were originally asking for it. I did pay a couple of hundred dollars on eBay, and eBay is probably going to be the only other place outside of laserpointerforums.com that you'll be able to snag one of these nowadays. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick look at the technical specs that they list for this laser on their website. I'm not going to go through every single thing on here, but like I said, it's that kind of UV-ish purple 405 nanometer color. Um, host is made out of aluminum and they advertise a power of 20 milliwatts and it runs on two CR123A batteries. So to insert those batteries, you just unscrew the tail cap at the very bottom of the laser and those batteries go in with the positive end facing the front of the laser and the negative end facing the spring or the rear of the laser. And I'm going to give you guys just a quick little zoom in on the interior of my laser here. Definitely doesn't look the prettiest, but the laser still functions, so don't really have any issues there. I do have one little weird thing that happens though. There's a cap on the very front of the laser too that you would think would be used to kind of focus the laser in and out, but it, it doesn't focus the laser in and out. It's probably used to uh, get to the internals of the laser. However, when I unscrew this cap, it somehow causes the button to get stuck and sticky. Um, when the cap is screwed on all the way, the button clicks fine, but when I start to unscrew the cap, if I click the button, it will get stuck on the on position until I screw the cap all the way back in. And not only that, but if I screw it in all the way as tight as it can go, that little cap on the top, the button will still get sticky as well. So there's this weird little like window of area where I have to have it unscrewed to just right for the button to not be sticky. Kind of a strange little quirk with the laser, but really not that big of a deal for me. I'm going to move on to showing you the laser in different lighting levels now, starting with a pretty normal, somewhat dim indoor lighting level. And as I say in all my laser videos, you need to make sure you're using laser safety glasses at all times that are properly rated for your laser. I'll put some down in the video description below. Now in this kind of normal lighting level indoors, the dot is it's fairly visible, it has a good amount of visibility. There's no beam visibility. Um, moving to an outdoor daytime setting now. Again, obviously no beam visibility and that dot is just barely visible. You really have to follow it with your eyes. And I'd say outside of maybe 10, 20 feet, it's just not visible. You can't find it. Um, so the, the daytime visibility is very, very weak on this one. You can just barely, barely make it out when it's right in front of you. And moving to a nighttime setting now, that dot is pretty bright. It's not like crazy bright or anything. And I still can't really see that beam at all. So this, this laser overall is very, very dim, not the brightest by any means. I'm going to move on to the LPM testing now. And they did rate this on their website product listing page at 20 milliwatts. However, the first test is indicating that that is just not the case with my particular unit. Test one is only indicating about three to four milliwatts on my laser B A LPM. Moving on to test two, I'm only putting out about 5 milliwatts 
and then moving on to test 3 sitting at about 4 milliwatts. Now that's obviously way off the advertised number of 20 milliwatts, it's only one fourth of it. Now this could be misadvertising on their part, but it could also be deterioration of the laser over the past decade. There's no way to know for sure, but those are the numbers I'm getting for my unit. I'm going to move on to showing you guys the laser in a foggy room right now. And it just goes to show how dim this laser actually is because the only way I'm even able to give you beam shots in this foggy room is when I hold the laser completely inside of the cloud of smoke coming out of the fog machine. Um, and obviously some of that is also because this is 405 nanometers. The peak visibility color is 555 nanometers which is a shade of green and the visible spectrum is about 400 to 700 nanometers. So this thing's way at the bottom, very, very far away, pretty much as far as it gets away on the visible spectrum from the most visible color. So if you had a bunch of five milliwatt lasers in every wavelength color, the low 400s would obviously be some of the least visible. With all that being said, I still like this laser a lot. It's one of the more rare units in my collection. Um, I know a lot of that's just because of the brand and because of the model and because of the history on this laser and if it was just some random Chinese 5 milliwatt purple laser off the street, it obviously would hold none of this value to me, but anyways, that's my little showcase of the Wicked Lasers Sonar. If any of you guys have any questions or feel that I left something out, leave it in the comments down below, and if you found this video interesting in any way, hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.